and everything, you know. He was such, you know, nice person and, and everything was cool. And then I don't remember much in regards to that day because it was so exciting meeting Bob Marley's son. And, you know, he was like mixed with white, you know, and a nice hair, very handsome man and very nice personality and everything. So, you know, I it, it pushed me even more to record the song, to become this singer. And so I um, got my money together and everything. But I, I don't remember having the money on that particular day. Security guard um, told me that, um, you know, Bob Marley, you know, was not there at the moment, you know. So I said, okay, I'm going to wait for him. So this is what I remember. I remember sitting like under a tree, but I remember sitting across from the studio and the security guard right there looking at me the whole time. And I remembered um, Ziggy, all, you know, the Marley's in and out, you know, of the Tough Gong studio driving their bougie car and everything, seeing the little girl sitting by the roadside, you know, just passing in front of their studio because it's not like there is another building close by. And it's not like I'm blaming the Marleys outright, but I just wanted their sympathy because everything started right at their facility. So, you know, I sat, I waited, I waited, I waited, little girl waiting for Bob Marley to come. And then I saw that night was coming down. So I went to the security guard and I said, you know, we've been here for a long time. Night is coming down. So, you know, when is Bob Marley coming? And he said that it's not going to be till another six months. So I said, six months, you know, so you knew all this time that Bob Marley not coming until six months and you had me sitting here the whole time waiting for Bob Marley? Excuse me, Desi. I don't like to talk and people walking back and forth. No. So I said that, you know, why didn't you tell me earlier that um, Bob Marley is gone for six months? You had me sit there waiting, waiting for Bob Marley. And by now, we don't know what to do because he told me that there are no vehicles running anymore, you know, to take me anywhere, you know. So I'm unable to go back home. I don't know where to go and sleep. I don't know what to do. So the security guard gave me a name and an address and told me that I should go to the address and, you know, everything will be okay, that I will be able to stay at that particular place and not to worry about anything. So we had no choice, me and Sybil. So we took the address information and he told me where to walk I remember walking and it wasn't far from the studio. I remember walking and then seeing this big house. And, you know, we knocked at the gate. Excuse me, the cat needs to go outside. I remember knocking at the gate and shouting, anybody home, anybody home? And then someone came to the gate and I told him that the security guard from Tough Gong Studio um, sent me there and said that, you know, 
we could stay there for the night and everything. And he said, sure, not a problem. So we went inside. It was a huge house, beautiful house. So we, we felt secure. We felt all right. They asked us if we needed anything to eat, you know, made sure we ate. I remember another guy being there asked us if we ate, but we, we felt like we were in good hands, you know, because in your mind, in your little mind, oh, you went to Bob Marley studio and it's a security guard from Bob Marley studio and he sent us to this big house. I did not know that that incident would change my whole life. It's like during the night, the man tried to make advances of, at me, 12 years old. And, you know, I was like, no, what are you doing? You got, get me? But I remember getting up the next day and saying to Sybil, come on, let's go home. And Sybil comes from a very poor family. So she just was excited about being in the big house and she just wanted to eat, eat, eat. And so she didn't care about going home. I wanted to go home. And the man was like, you know, he will drop us home so to hold on. Night come down again, same thing. The man don't drop a so or anything, and we're still there. The advances got worse, where I was raped continuously, over and over and over again. I told Sybil what was happening to me, and, you know, she showed no interest in escaping. I don't know if anybody was bothering her, but it was just me, because I was the little pretty one, you know, and... Honestly, she, she, you know, you know, she wasn't that good looking. She had nothing to worry about. Nobody was messing with her. It was me, you know. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I've never been sex so often in all my life. In all my life. Over and over and over and over again. And... One day turned to one week, one week turned to a month, a month turned to two months, to three months, to four months, to five months, to six months, to seven months, to eight months, to nine months, to 10 months, to 11 months, to 12 months. I was not allowed to go home. I was not allowed to go to the gate. I was barricaded in with burglar bars and padlocks. I wasn't allowed to go to the corner store. I was allowed to go nowhere. Nowhere. I wasn't allowed to see anyone. The furthest that we ever went was when he put us in a car and he would drive to a friend's house that they would smoke weed together. And that's the furthest that I ever went. I remember one day the individual took a journey to Ocherias and we had to pass through Geisel St. Mary, where I was from. And what they did during that time was um, put my head down when I was passing my community and kept my head down until we got through that community. So imagine you're passing home. You're, you know that your grandmother often sit at the window and you know that your grandpa may be on the veranda but 
you're passing and they don't know that you're passing by because your head is held down, you know, until you pass your community. So it went on for over a year, one year in captivity, just for wanting to be a singer and hearing so much about Bob Marley, Bob Marley Studio, and venturing for my dreams to come true. And trust me, my dreams eventually came true with a studio down the road called Dynamic Sound Studio, where no one disrespected me, and they all got to work, recorded my song, Ghetto Child, and also recorded Needing You. So I want to know why was the Bob Marley studio not safe where they basically set me up and sent me to a facility where I was raped over and over and kidnapped for over a year. How did I escape? I prayed continuously. And then one day when he went to the area where they where you always chill and smoke you know i went to the gate and i saw some people passing by and something say i should tell them what's going on and i say can you help me i've been kidnapped for over a year and i want to go to school and i want to go home to my grandmother I remember saying those words because I love school and I miss school. I was a student of St. Mary High School in Highgate, St. Mary. And there was a young man in the group and he said, I'm going to come back this way and I'm going to whistle. And when I whistle, I want you to run and I will tell you where to run to. So... I went back inside and then I heard the whistle and I said to Sybil, I said, Sybil, I'm going to run away and you might as well come because I can't live this way no more. And so I went outside. The man was like high and everything. And I went outside and he tell me to run that way and so I ran and there was a fence like um, a wall and he told me to jump and I remember I don't know how I did it but I remember scaling the fence jumping over the wall ladies and gentlemen I jumped into a yard with so many dogs and I remember running for my life and having to jump another fence and only, I, I could only be been saved by Jesus Christ. I jumped over the other fence, and that's how I ended up with this mark right here on my feet that is now a tattoo right down here. These marks have to do with when I jump the, the fence. I covered that mark now with roses, and... So I jumped over the next fence and he realized by now that I, I, I had es escaped and he started to run me down with a G-U-N and the guy kept telling me to run, run, run and kept leading me and I continued to run, run, run. For whatever reason, whenever I go to Grand Span, where Gullibop is from, there is an area there that reminds me of where I ran. Because it's like this area that is called the gully. You know, I'm so familiar with that area. Because I remember being on one side of the gully and the man on the other side. And he was saying that he's going to K-I-L-L me. And I remember that's when I was bold because I figured to myself that a B-U-L-L-E-T cannot travel that far. And that's when I cursed him out and told him that he can't do me nothing. And 
Then I continued running. And the guy led me to a yard with a huge gate. He opened the gate and we all went inside. And then luckily he told me to hide in the bushes. So I hid in the bushes. Luckily we didn't go straight inside the house because shortly after I was in the bushes, the men came, beat down the door, and they were like, where's she at, where's she at? And the lady was like, what are you talking about? And they said, I remember they even said, this girl, she's good looking, brown skin, although I ain't that brown skin. They was like, she's brown skin, did she come here? And the lady said, I don't know what you're talking about. They went through our house, our daughters and all that, but they wanted me. And the lady said, I don't know what you're talking about. No girl is here. And I'm in the bushes and I'm going shaking, shaking, ants biting me and everything. And I'm like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You get what I'm saying? Shaking like a leaf, you know? And the men walked around and everything. Excuse me if I kind of lose it every now and then because this is traumatic. The men walked around and everything and they were there for at least, I would say, less than 45 minutes. And they eventually left. But I still could not leave, you know, from the bushes because I felt like they would still come back. But I remember eventually going in the house, sleeping in the bed, and worrying that they were going to come back to hurt me. And so I hardly, barely got any sleep. And I got up the next day and I told the guy that um, I'm ready to go home now. And that's when the guy informed me that I'm going nowhere so from the security guard at Tough Gong to being kidnapped by whoever he sent me to and being kidnapped for one year to being able to escape, I was then kidnapped again. The person who saved me kidnapped me again and told me that I could not leave. And it's like everything started all over again. The constant rape without my permission, endless intercourses until it's sickening. No wonder I, I, I don't care about intercourse. Sickening, colliding over and over. It's like my body had become meat that you just batter. And you just fool your belly with. You know, you eat, you fool your belly. I didn't feel like a human being. My soul felt empty. I've been lost ever since. When you as a woman have no right over your body. And I decided to escape again. Because on this particular morning, you know, the guy screwed me, wanted more and more. And I was like, I can't do this no more. I was outside and he was like, come inside to go at it again. And I like, no, I'm not coming. So he had a cup of tea in his hand and he threw the tea at me and burnt up my back. And that's when I said, Sybil, I got to get out of here. I said, God never leave the people at the Red Sea. They escaped from captivity, but it didn't stop there. They were able to cross the Red Sea. And I do believe that the God of Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has plans for me to be free. I believe in him and I'm going to cross this Red Sea. So I say, you coming or not? So she say, okay. Because she seemed to be fine with everything. Ain't nobody messing with her. So 
we waited until he was asleep and we ventured to the gate which was far from the house a distance we ventured to the gate and all i remember was some skill that we came up with where like she went on my back and jump over the wall and then she extended her hand to lift me up and bring me over the wall that's all i remember and i remember our god i remember we had to decide first who's going to go over the wall and it was her i think we pulled straws or something um like you know i remember like grass and we pulling the grass but i i don't remember all that tactics is done but we pulled grass straw and then she won and so she was able to escape first and she went over the wall and i remember you know i was saying like put your hand further pull me pull me